Motorola's first foldable is now over three years old. It still feels like foldables are a thing that just came out. This Motorola Razr's folding display has a purple line running the full length of the screen, and while it still works, it's distracting. This phone's ease of repairability was rated seven times worse than the iPhone 14 on iFixit's repairability score. Even for a foldable, that's still hard to imagine for anyone who's watched my iPhone teardown and repair assessment videos. So I'm going to have to enter with an open mind to judge it for myself. This will be the second Motorola foldable I've worked on, the first being Mr. Mobile's newer model Razer 5G, which had a broken outer screen. I purchased this one from the United States for 65 US dollars, including shipping. That's a lot less than the thousand dollar price tag this phone had just over three years ago. To fix it, we're going to need help from this video's sponsor, iFixit. To celebrate 20 years in business, iFixit is doing an anniversary flash sale. Get a free Minaro toolkit when you spend over 150 US dollars and use the code BDAYTOOLS at checkout. iFixit also supplied the replacement genuine Motorola parts for this phone, including the new foldable screen and its matching adhesive. Unlike Samsung's foldable screens, this one comes without a frame, meaning we need to glue it onto the old one. Hopefully a task less daunting than it currently seems. I believe the current screen's point of failure isn't where it folds, but it's flex cable located at the very bottom of the OLED, as pressing in this area causes more lines to appear. With that, it's time we open the phone. It's over to the heat plate for several minutes where I can heat the lower section of the device. My usual method of using a suction cup to lift up the back panel won't work on this device because of its textured back panel. Instead, I'll work my plastic pick in without it, loosening the adhesive around the top section before flipping it over to the other side. There is a small amount of adhesive located at the bottom. Because of the fingerprint cable, we have to gently work the adhesive free to avoid damaging the attached cable. This is one of the criticisms of this device in iFixit's teardown. This setup reminds me of Apple's iPhone 5S and SE. What's different on this phone is that the sensor can be freed without unplugging it. It's only attached to the rear panel with light adhesive, so I was able to push it free. With such a recessed connector, I can understand the criticism, but I don't think unplugging it at this stage was the intended way of disassembly. But now that we have access to the internals, we can see one of its two batteries. We won't get a chance to see the other, as performing an inner display replacement on this phone doesn't require the removal of the outer screen or any components from the top section, eliminating the chance of damaging the outer screen trying to remove it. If you ask me, that's good design. Next to come out is the speaker, which has its own cable hidden beneath, along with a plastic retaining bracket and the connections for the antenna and battery. Before applying any alcohol, I came to the realization that not only was the other battery still attached, but this battery has been stuck down to the motherboard. To avoid any possibility of liquid damage, I avoided softening the adhesive with alcohol and just went about prying it free using one of iFixit's plastic cards. Thankfully, there was nothing below, but care needs to be taken to avoid damaging any surface mount components surrounding the battery. All of the connectors on the motherboard are surrounded by a goo, likely to keep any minimal liquid entry away from these connectors. After unfastening four Torx screws, I discovered the board was still attached. It was on the other side that I noticed a microphone cable that needs to be unplugged. To gain access to it, the vibration motor needs to be removed. Now the motherboard can be folded upwards so that the three remaining cables can be detached. This motherboard is packing a Snapdragon 710 processor, 128 gigs of storage and 6 gigs of RAM. With it free, we can see the USB-C port is soldered onto the board, preventing an easy replacement. We can also see how the display shifts when opened. With the fragile flex cable wrapping around the bottom of the assembly, I can see how some ingress of dirt could possibly damage this cable. I believe this is why our OLED display has become damaged. The next piece to come out is this metal retaining bracket at the bottom of the phone. With that, the display is almost free. There's just one flex cable to detach, and then we can start working on removing the top section of the display. For this, it's back to the heat plate for a quick heat before we start prying off the display. I found the best point of entry was from the center after folding the phone slightly. From here, I can insert a plastic prying tool and use some alcohol to help aid the display's removal. 
It'll be interesting to see whether the display still works after it's been pried from the phone. We'll test that later on. With the top section unadhered, the screen can now be simply slid out from the frame. This gives us the opportunity to see the display's hinge mechanism. There's been quite a bit of wear to the back of the old screen, as well as quite a bit of dust ingress over the hinge. As for the damage to the display, I wanted to see if I could spot anything to the cable. There's quite a lot of dust, but no obvious damage. It appears the actual cable is under this yellow tape, so it's really hard to tell. It's now time for the new display. This one has come from Motorola via iFixit. iFixit sells select genuine Motorola parts on their store. Unfortunately, while they source this one for me, it isn't currently listed on their site. Therefore, I have no idea what it cost, and I don't have a link for anyone looking to purchase one. I'm sure if there was demand, they would sell them, but this is a repair I don't think they believe most people will tackle. I'll remove as much of the old glue residue before applying the new adhesive. There is two sides to this. I placed the dotted side down against the frame, leaving the clearer side of the adhesive upright. Now comes the most daunting part, attaching the folding display. I'll slide it into the frame first and attach the metal stopper at the bottom of the phone. This stopper prevents the display from pushing out the bottom. Failure to install this before folding the device shut will cause the new display to fold incorrectly, and that could cause damage. But the hardest part will be aligning the display. As it's spring-loaded, we need to pull the display taut, but with adhesive, this means we only get one shot at it. After removing the protective film from the adhesive, I slightly folded the display, allowing for the new screen to line up with the top of the frame. I wasn't quite ready when it took grip. This adhesive is incredibly strong and there was no separating it now. With it attached, it's time for a fold. Thankfully, it worked and didn't snap in half. So now it's time we get this phone reassembled for a test. It's time for the motherboard to go back in, being sure to correctly route the display cable so that it can attach to the top side of the board. We of course can't forget to connect the microphone and vibration motor back into place. At this point, I can partially slide the speaker under the fingerprint hardware as it needs to be plugged in from the other side before it's screwed into place. Once I get the antenna plugged in, I'll now take the time to test the display we removed earlier. The reason for this is that I'm curious to see if it still works. A damaged display that functions for the most part can still be useful for data recovery. This one works as well as it did when I removed it, so I can keep it or sell it cheaply to someone who needs a test display. For now though, we'll shut down the phone, disconnect our old screen and attach our new one. For the battery, I'll be reusing the old adhesive as it'll be plenty strong enough to hold it in place. With it and its plastic bracket in place, it's time we test our new screen. After pressing the power button, nothing immediately happens, but like always with the Razer, the inner display takes a little longer to light up. Once the phone's booted up, we can see the display is working perfectly and folds just how it should. With that, we can power down the phone and install the rear panel. But before I do so, I'll need to remove all the old adhesive and apply some new stuff. I didn't have any genuine adhesive to use here, so I just cut some myself. This phone is not dust or water resistant, so the adhesive is only to hold the back panel in place. Proceeding, I can remove all the protective film from the adhesive before attaching the back panel. I'll do this from the front where I can tuck the fingerprint sensor in before positioning the panel. Flipping the phone over to the back, I can now press it into place. The last thing left to do is unfold our main display and remove its plastic protective film. And we're done. So this is it, the Motorola Razr repaired and back to fully working order. It was certainly a daunting process having to align the fragile folding OLED display on the frame, 
especially since you only have one chance to do it. Still, I think it's worthy of a repairability score greater than 1, possibly 3 or 4, largely due to the soldered on USB-C port, having to open both halves for a proper battery replacement, and that daunting screen replacement. One massive downside to this phone over newer models is its eSIM only. Apple was not the first to remove the SIM card slot. As this phone was purchased from Verizon in the US, I'm not sure if it's carrier locked, but I know physical SIM Verizon phones are not, so hopefully the same goes for eSIM models. But I don't have an eSIM to test. It also seems Motorola has already forgotten about this phone, giving it's running Android 11 with a security patch update from January of 2022, more than a year and a half ago. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.